Hi, I'm Scott Smith from Q and Stewing and Brewing Barbecue Team out of Kennesaw, Georgia. Today we're going to start this video cookbook out with a uh, potato crusted cod fillet. And uh, I'm going to finish it off with some zucchini. And this is something you can do at home. You can do it on a grill. You can do it on a Coleman stove outdoors. You can do it at a campsite. It's very simple, very easy. And uh, you're going to see me throughout the year wearing different different clothing and uh, probably be in a different trailer, but uh, it'll be me all year long on the same video cookbook. We're going to take our, we're going to take our uh, cod fillets out. These are, these are normal right out of the grocery store. Last minute decision. I'm going to make a simple egg wash with uh, one egg. I got some shell in there. one egg and a hair of milk probably looking at uh, three to four ounces instant potatoes whatever flavor you like they sell these things like oatmeal and grits you can buy them in any flavor I buy the 10 pack box and don't be afraid to mix them or use them any way you see fit. I'm going to add some uh, just fresh parsley. I just coarse chop this. I'm going to add it to the instant potatoes. Any instant potato will work. They got the bacon, the garlic, the butter. Uh, I sometimes mix two or three flavors of the instant potatoes with this dish. This dish has won quite a few anything but topped the loft or on top of Alfredo, uh, any fresh veggies. Sometimes on Friday nights, the judges like to see something a hair healthy. It ain't 100% healthy, but it is a hair healthy. We're going to add just a little bit of salt and pepper, just a dash. I'm going to heat my oil up. We're just going to take and uh, this thing knows no low. You can do this with canola, vegetable, corn, doesn't matter. You want the bottom of the pan maybe an eighth of an inch. This is flash frying these fish fillets. I like to use grouper. I like to use the square chunks. Local store here did not have them. This is a flash fry deal. When that oil is hot, you're, we're only crusting one side just for the presentation of it. Taking that fillet right out of the egg wash, pressing it into our potato and parsley crumbs. We're going to cook one side of it with a batter. If you're presenting it, I like to do that dark vein with a potato on it. That way you can present the shiny white side. When we flip these in the oil in the pan, we're going to do we're going to re-salt and pepper that one side only. That all is starting to ripple. Potato side down. Rehit them with some salt. A little bit of pepper. While those are cooking, I'm going to take a quick snap on a zucchini, popping both ends. I'm going to quarter the zucchini. I'm going to salt and pepper it. We're going to cook it right alongside the fish shortly. It doesn't take zucchini long to flash fry zucchini. You can, you can wind up doing it less than a minute aside and it'll get a nice color. 
These guys here have been down about 45 seconds. They're not there yet. We're doing uh, just a little lemon for our zucchini. I'm going to go ahead and prepare up a couple of wedges. If you hit these with lemon at the end with the salt and pepper when they come right out of the oil, that fish is going to absorb a little of it. They're going to come out. The lemon's just going to bring out the flavor of the zucchini with the salt and pepper. These are getting crusty on the ends. The edges of them are getting brown. When they get like that, all you want to do is make one simple flip. Your next step on those is they're coming out. We're gonna lay our zucchini in here on the side. I try to put the meat side down, skin up, just to get a hair of color on it. Little 10 minute meal, real healthy, real easy, and it actually comes out great on the plate as presentation. Especially you guys cooking on a first date watching barbecue TV. That fish starts turning white from clear here on the front end. When you get the clearness gone, that's, your juices are out and that fish is about done. All we want on the bottom is just a little color. I'm gonna flip these zucchini back to their other side. We're just gonna kinda hit them on three sides as they go. There yet. Give it another second. This zucchini is um, almost done like it is. You can see it's already hitting the, the limp side. If you like it a little crisp, this lemon is going to bring the flavor out of it. As soon as we throw it on a plate, we're going to hit it with a dash of lemon. The salt and pepper that's on there is going to be all the seasoning it needs. Just a little oil out of that fish is not going to hurt nothing. I know these health nuts are looking at it going, you're frying everything. but. We're just kind of flash frying this. You're not getting any grease in it. There's nothing submerged. We got less than a quarter of an inch in here. And half of that is now water out of the fish or the zucchini. To brown these guys after the fish is out, I'll roll them around. We're looking for just a little color on them. You can see that seasoning off of the fish and the potatoes that we've got on them. Got that beautiful golden brown on top and they are close. It's not gonna be boiled zucchini or fried zucchini. From, it's gonna be gourmet zucchini. We're gonna throw two of these guys over here like this. We're on paper plates today because we're outdoors at a barbecue competition in Young Harris, Georgia at Brasstown Valley. It is a KCBS event. We're gonna hit everything here with just a touch of lemon. You can throw any side with that you like. That is, uh, that is our potato encrusted uh, cod with zucchini spears at a golden brown. I hope you guys enjoy it. This is a quick and easy recipe that anybody can do from home. It's also a good quick thing you can do to impress. You can go to the store, buy any fish you like. I personally do grouper the most. This is cod and uh, any of your main white fish will work. Encrust the one side, try it at home. I hope you like it. Hi, I'm Scott Smith and we're outdoor grilling with QN Stewing and Brewing Professional Barbecue Team. We're at my home today in Kennesaw, Georgia. Yesterday was a great day. We grand champion the Sam's Marietta event, moving on to the regional finals in Tennessee. And we're going to do some outdoor grilling today with some steaks and uh, we're going to do some side dishes. I'm going to do a steak and asparagus. I'm going to start out with a, like a Hawaiian steak. I got eight ounces of pineapple juice. We're going to put in two tablespoons of brown sugar. We're going to put in about six, four ounces of soy sauce, half a cup. 
I'm going to go into just a little bit of ginger. I'm not measuring it, but a teaspoon would be sufficient. Dry ginger? Dry ginger, right out of, a, right out of your spice cabinet. We're going to whisk these things together. And that's going to be our steak marinade. You can put ribeyes in this, make Hawaiian ribeyes, fillets. Today I've got these little sirloin fillets. That's what they had at my butcher today. I like to put those in a Ziploc bag and have them in over uh, six hours or so. Do them in the morning before you go to work. Do them on your lunch break, but I like to let those marinate. That marinate part's done, and we're going to set this to the side and move along. Scott Smith back here. We're uh, we're doing that uh, sirloin that we've got in our in our marinade with our pineapple juice, our brown sugar, a little bit of our ginger, and uh, soy sauce. We're making Hawaiian pineapple with that. We're going to do asparagus. I'm going to show you something on asparagus here. We take asparagus. I don't cut it. I basically rinse, and I like to break it wherever it will break at. That tells you where it's tender. Sometimes they're short. If it's these bigger guys, they're going to be short take this piece of asparagus and bend it wherever it breaks is what you want off of there these are going to be husky we're going to bump these down I've already pre broke a few of them there once that's done simple asparagus on the grill piece of aluminum foil want all your tops lined up with the seeds on them up top because we're going to protect that top that is the greatest part of the asparagus when you eat it is protecting that top Line that down here at the bottom. We're going to hit it with olive oil. I just use plain virgin olive oil. And I like to use sea salt or a blend of sea salt. And I'm using Crazy Jane's today. It's a, it's a sea salt with a couple of herbs in it. It's basically a kicked up sea salt. All we're putting on there is the salt and the olive oil. Take your aluminum foil, get these tips covered and under that foil. Crimp your side up into a little boat. The way that oil doesn't go anywhere, you can leave this thing open and it's going to go right on the grill with our Hawaiian sirloins. You can direct grill these. You can lay them on your top rack. They may take a little longer on top. Direct grilling is a good way to go with them. Get them tongs. Our sirloins are going to be the same way. We got about a 400 degree grill, just a light sear. This Hawaiian glaze with the pineapple juice will burn. So if you want to sear them at, you know, 600 degrees, you're probably going to have just a hair more crust than you were hoping for because the sugar in the pineapple juice will crispen up quick. We're going to do these babies about three minutes a side to a medium, medium rare. That asparagus can stay there and go to bed and it'll be done with your steaks in about six to seven minutes. You'll have the entire meal. We're going to turn these steaks. They've been in here approximately three minutes. We're just going to make one little turn on them. I like to see this Hawaiian. I like to keep it a little light. These are small little fillets of sirloin. I don't want a lot of char on it. Like I said, I don't want the burnt pineapple. Burnt pineapple and soy does something that you do not want. And at this time, we're going to squeeze just a little bit of lemon on our asparagus just to juice it up and get a little steam going in it. These things are already nearly done now. A little bit of lemon juice on it. Put them back to bed for three more minutes. Our steaks and asparagus should be looking about right. I'm gonna look at these steaks. Turn them back one time just to check them. Since we've got that initial off of them, I'm actually gonna put a quick sear on them. I've got one grill sitting here at 550 degrees. I don't sear them while they're raw simply because they will burn the pineapple juice. The burnt pineapple juice is not great. I'm going to put marks on one side of them and we're going to plate them. Our asparagus here is done. You're still going to have plenty of crisp in it. Salt, pepper, olive oil. I toss them around in that olive oil for just a minute. That's grilled asparagus. You got juices running out. We got the water out of the asparagus. You kept color. You didn't burn your ends off. They're going to be just a little crispy. 
They're not going to droop over when you pick them up with a fork. These steaks are probably seared. We're going to rotate them one time just to get our char mark. There's that pineapple juice sticking. These guys give them. We should have our sear on our steaks. We turned them 90 degrees one time. We're going to plate these with this asparagus here. I'm going to turn them over and just put that little bit of char up. If you put this char on too early, I'm telling you, you will not like the flavor. Do it at the end after you've cooked the steak at both sides for three minutes. And there's your asparagus and your sirloin fillets, Hawaiian style. Hi, this is Scott Smith again from QN Stewing and Brewing Professional Barbecue Team. We're here today, we're gonna to do a tuna tataki. I like tuna and I like it rare. This is a fine cut of fish here that we have. We're basically just gonna encrust this thing and we're gonna grill it in a matter of minutes right on your chimney. All you barbecue cooks have a chimney. You know what's going on with those. I've got a little grate that I put on and I'm using sesame seeds and coarse ground black pepper. And that is all we're putting on this tuna. You take your tuna right from the store and all we're doing is crusting it. Put it out on a plate, mash it in there. Get you a decent crust all the way around it. I even do my edges. Don't skimp on the pepper and don't skimp on the sesame seeds. You're going to love it. Get this guy encrusted all the way around. It is ready for the grill. I'm going to do a two minute grill, probably per side, right on my chimney. We're here at our chimney. I've got this chimney. It's been running for uh, 15 minutes. All the coals are red hot. It's like a jet engine. I put this grate on here for about two minutes to get it hot. And this is what I want to hear when I throw this tuna here. I want to hear it sizzle. I want to hear it. Um, we're, we're doing all four sides. You sit here with a pair of tongs. All we're doing is giving this thing a quick crust. There's no uh, no grilling, no walking away. This is. This is two minutes of solid concentration that'll really pay off for your taste buds. We're going to make a little sauce shortly for this thing. It's basically anything you've had, if you've had tataki, it's going to be basically the same thing. All I want is the back side of it. You get the sesame seeds a little toasted. Those black pepper kernels are toasted in there. You're doing about 30 seconds on each of the flat sides. and We're going to probably do 15 seconds on the edges. I like to do the entire border of it also. Stand it up and get your border. You're going to have to hold it the entire time to get the border of it. It's going to be red and it's going to be rare inside, but it's going to be tasty. This is right on your chimney. These barbecue cooks can do this at their cook site and be the gourmet chef because everybody's got a chimney with them. That's it. And that's what you're looking for. We're going to make a quick simple sauce for our tuna tataki. I'm basically, you, you can use any teriyaki sauce that you have. You're going to have to thin it out. I use about a quarter of a cup of teriyaki. Same with my soy sauce again. All, you don't need much. This is enough to do several pieces of tuna. About a quarter of a cup of each. Whisk these guys together. Simple soy, simple teriyaki. When I present this, I would normally take my tuna, make about pencil to to a third uh, three eighths of an inch slices, kind of like these barbecue guys cut their brisket. Layer this guy across here. It's rare. You got that sesame seed, those peppercorns working. And this little drizzle of sauce just finishes it off on the end. 
awesome appetizer, awesome side dish. Quick, easy, couple of minutes, three ingredients. Scott Smith here again, Q and Stewing and Brewing's professional barbecue team. We're gonna do a, an apple cinnamon pork chop today. It's gonna, you're gonna cook this thing a little lower. We're gonna put it on the grill around 300 degrees. We're gonna put corn on the grill. All I done to this corn, I took it and chopped both ends off and I got down to where I had the moist shucks. I got rid of the dry and I cut off the little angel hair on the top of it. We're gonna lay them directly on the grill. Just put them up on our bread rack, a couple hundred degrees up there, um, probably 300 on the thermometer. These pork chops are going to get nothing right now except for just a dash of salt and a dash of cinnamon. And we're going to finish them out with an apple jelly at the end of the grilling. We're putting salt and cinnamon on them. That cinnamon will penetrate this pork and leave a lasting flavor through it that you, you should enjoy if you like cinnamon. And the apple jelly is just going to be a glaze on the top of it. One of the grill. We're going to grill these off at 300 degrees. They'll set here for 8 to 10 minutes before we come and turn them. Nothing but cinnamon and salt on them. I like to put my corn up here on the top rack. It can sit there the entire time. If corn's in the shucks, you usually cannot overcook it. We're going to make Brussels sprouts to go along with our uh, pork chop and corn that's on the grill. What I like to do on Brussels sprouts is a little twist on them. I'm gonna fry some bacon. Bacon, Brussels sprouts, at least they both start with a B, huh? I'm gonna fry this bacon up. We're gonna take our Brussels sprouts. All I'm doing is cutting these guys in half. Take a Brussels sprout, cut it directly in half. When they go in this bacon grease shortly, I want this side down. I wanna cook the inside of that little Brussels sprout, that little cabbage head inside. That's what I wanna cook. I want it uh, the grease just for the flavor. We're gonna wind up throwing maybe a couple of little onions in there for flavor. I bought this thin bacon, cooks up easy, gives you just enough grease what you need. Bacon, we're actually gonna pull it off, crumble it back into them for a finishing and the end. We're finishing up our bacon here. As soon as I get this bacon just about fried up to where it's crispy, I lay it off to the side here. We're gonna put these Brussels sprouts in here. Cabbage side down. All I want to do is toast that inside a little. It also helps keep them together. They're still going to come apart a little bit like cabbage leaves, but it's not the end of the world. Bacon grease really gets in there this way if you put them this way. It's not the healthiest way to eat them, but guess what? You're getting your Brussels sprout. I like to tear this bacon up because I'm going to pour that right back on them right here at the end after we roll them around. These are going to be our jacked up Brussels sprouts. These guys do not take long in bacon grease. All you want is a little color on the side. These are looking perfect. See the bacon grease in the pan's gone. And guess where it's at? It's probably up in this good healthy Brussels sprout you're gonna eat. Finish these, I'll throw the bacon back in them. Let that work for just a few minutes on that bottom side. And there's a side dish almost as quick as you can fry two or three pieces of bacon. All right, these are done. We've got both sides of them. We just got just a little color on that inside. We put them on on, kind of turn the back sides of them just a hair. Put these onto a plate. Might be the best Brussels sprout that you ever ate. That is our bacon Brussels sprouts. I do serve those along with these apple pork, pork chops. Pork been running in here about six to eight minutes. These are two butterfly boneless chops. Just with that cinnamon salt is all we had on them. Just want to roll those guys around. While I'm in here, I will roll my corn over. See how that shuck's kind of peeled back. It's drying. That corn's cooking right in its own juices right out of the shucks. 
we're going to put those pork chops back and let them sit there for another uh, six to eight minutes on each side. And uh, we're going to let six minutes go on that side. And we're going to top these with some amazing apple glaze. We're going to wilt some spinach real quick for our, um, for our pork chops, our corn, our Brussels sprouts. We're going to get plenty of greens in this meal today. I can take my spinach, hit it with just a hair of olive oil. I'm going to just toss this together as good as I can with... Um, all I want is a little bit through it, just enough to keep from burning. And we're actually going to do this right outside here on the grill. When I do steam spinach, I love it with onion and garlic. I got two cloves of garlic here already cut. I'm going to throw that in there. Garlic, something about garlic and olive oil. You can make salad dressings with it or you can eat it. I usually throw a few onions in with it for the moisture. These, mo these onions will help the wilting process of your spinach because of the moisture in them. It's what's going to produce the steam and make your onions or make your spinach wilt down. There's probably enough here for two servings, believe it or not, out of that one big bag because when spinach wilts it does go to nothing. We're going to go directly on a hot grill at about 450 degrees. I'm going to let this guy set here for about two to three minutes and I'm gonna turn it with tongs. It's probably set there two to three more minutes and it'll be 100% done. Spinach has been down about three minutes. We're gonna to toss this stuff around here. It is wilting down. Takes you just a hair more on your grill than it would in your kitchen with the lid on it. But this is coming down. These onions and garlic's cooking into it. That olive oil's already rendered into it. It's coming together. Toss it around like this about every two to three minutes. Give it a quick toss because the more you toss it, the greener it's going to get. And you can see it there starting to wilt down. Spinach comes down very quickly, especially with steam. If I was doing this inside my house, I would probably just do the spinach and garlic. Maybe use a tablespoon of water and I set a lid on top of it. But when I do it on the grill, I like to use the onions because it gives that continuous moisture. And the onions and garlic go together go well with the spinach also but if I was doing it inside I'd probably leave the onions out and just use direct water because your stove's going to put a more direct heat on it. We're going to give it another couple of minutes and we're going to look in on our pork chops. These pork chops are looking pretty cooked here. Our cinnamon's in them. These were butterflies. I'm going to turn them to where the butterflies are up. We're going to put some apple jelly in them. This is just plain apple jelly. Wherever you buy your groceries at. Nothing fancy. The cinnamon, the salt's already there. Spoon this apple jelly on, kind of like barbecue sauce. It's going to melt down into a little glaze. And you'll be surprised at what a taste you'll get with just simple jelly. I like to spoon it on, just kind of mash it around. It is sugary. Some of it's going to burn off on your grill, but it does burn. It's fruit and sugar. We're going to give them that apple jelly glaze there for another couple of minutes. Move back over to my spinach. That spinach is looking just about right. I'm going to squeeze a little bit of lemon on it. That lemon will give it the extra moisture, help it come on down. All we're doing is wilting this. We're going to hit this with just a hair of salt. After that lemon, salt's going to bring all that flavor together. I think that's down. That is some tender looking spinach. Little lemon, little garlic, little onion. This spinach is fully cooked. The onions are going to have just a hair. You're not going to have a lot of onion flavor in the spinach. It did take some of it out. The onions are running.
pretty clear here. That's just in a five to six minute cook, but they do look pretty good. We're gonna move back over and look at our pork chops. They should be coming together quickly. That apple jelly will glaze in. We'll uh, hit it again. Once it warms up, it really starts coming together. I like to spoon it around, let it run over this pork chop. When it runs over it, it's gonna run on the grill, but you're fine with it. That pork chop's actually done. I set them on my plate. Have them to where all your apple jelly didn't run off in your grill. You'll get a great glaze on top of it. Corn we put on earlier. I like to peel the corn open. I look at it, feel the end of it. Looks like it's about there. Corn's another one of them products that you can eat any way you want it. I'll go ahead and shut my grill off. Corn's done. But we're going to let it uh, set here and plate up our spinach and our chops together.